How's everyone doing? We all good? All good? So we've been talking about community and the call on us as believers to go out and be witnesses of the goodness of God, right? And as we've heard from Bully, community is such an important part of how we spread the gospel to people. And when I think of the local church, I think it's very easy sometimes for myself included, to pass off that responsibility to other people, right? We say, no, the people that work for the church, they can do ministry, they can go tell people about Jesus, or the pastors, they can speak to people on the streets about who God is, or the, the, life, the life group people, they can invite strangers in their house and feed them, like, that's not for me. But actually, today I want to challenge us and call us to more. You see, the Bible talks about the church as us. We are the church. Nowhere in the Bible does when it speaks about the church, it speaks about a building. It specifically speaks about groups of people that believe in Jesus, accept the salvation, and follow in his teaching. And the last time I checked, I'm a person, and you all look like people. So that means that you and me are the church, right? That's great. So the, the title of my preach today is actually called do it yourself. Say, do it yourself. Do it yourself. So in Luke chapter 10, Jesus tells a story about the Good Samaritan. And what happens was this guy was walking from one city to another and um, these people come and like beat him up and rob him and just leave him on the ground with nothing. He couldn't stand. He couldn't help himself. He had nothing. And Jesus goes on to say that somebody comes walking past and it's a priest. And you think in your mind, oh great, the priest is going to help him. No, it says the priest saw him and he carried on walking. Next comes a temple's assistant and the temple's assistant sees him and keeps on walking. Next person that comes by is a Samaritan. And in those times, nobody thought the Samaritan would be the person to help. But the Bible, or Jesus says that he felt compassion. And in verse 34, it says, um, going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. Now, when I read that story, it really grips my heart. Sometimes it's like a wake-up call. Because can I ask you t today, how many times are you the priest or are you the temple's assistant? How often do you just walk past people in need and just think, oh, it's fine, somebody else will do it? I actually believe that the community that Acts talks about can only be done well if we, you and me, the local church, start doing things ourselves. You see, we have so many people in our communities, in our workspaces, in our schools, on the street, or even people actually sitting here today that need help. They need to be helped physically, emotionally, spiritually, and they need to be shown the love of Jesus. And that's only going to happen if you yourself step out and reach out. You see, what gets to me about this story is that the Good Samaritan didn't ask the man, like, what did you do? Like, why are you like that? What did you do to get in that situation? Why, where do you work? Uh, what kind of people do you believe in? Or, you know, do you su support the Springboks or the All Blacks? He didn't ask things like that, right? He immediately just saw the man in need, and he reached out and helped. Now, when I say we need to do things ourselves, that means that we need to leave our preferences, our priorities, and our prejudices at the door. It means that we need to stop thinking that somebody else will do it because when we live like that, that actually opens the door for people to be left behind and for the, the vision of community that we see in Acts to actually fail. You see, um, further on in Acts 2.42 that Bully spoke about, it speaks about the community that they share together. They eat meals together. They are generous. And um, out of that fellowship, it says people were saved. So ultimately... We are not going to be able to spread the gospel and the good news to Jesus and be witnesses to people if we are doing these things with the same Christian people every week. You see, we are walking past people who need to hear the gospel and who need to experience the love of Jesus. And if we don't do that, we're going to be losing a vital part of our community, people who need to know the love of Jesus. You see, on Fridays, um, Michael alluded to it, but I'm a youth leader, and I've been doing youth for a very, very long time, and sometimes it gets rough, all right? It's a bit rough, and I'm like, I do not want to spend my Friday night with these kids that are screaming and going on, and we're trying to pack the chairs, and you pack it right, and then they pack it skew, and then it's just like, Jesus, I need your strength, right? But actually, 
The reason I do youth sometimes is because the story of the Good Samaritan has gripped my heart. There are youth in my, peop- uh, in my story that I know that every day they go to school, their teachers walk past them. Their parents walk past them. Their friends walk past them. They are ne- in need of emotional, spiritual, sometimes physical help, but nobody is stopping to see them and to help them. So in closing, I actually want to practically challenge us to, to this morning. Um, you see, sometimes we can just hear little sevens or actual preachers and be like, oh, that's nice. But can I actually challenge you? We still have a minute and 25 seconds. Can you take out your phones? In a, take out your phones. And if this message has actually gripped your heart, just like the story of the Good Samaritan grips mine, can I ask that you message someone that you think might need to be shown the love of Jesus? Message someone that you think, I don't, you may not even know if they need help, but ask the Holy Spirit now, who is it that you want me to reach out to? Because when we invite people to things, you know, invite them to dinner, invite them to carols next week, guys, that is such a good time for people to see the love of Jesus and the, me- the meaning of Christmas. When you invite them to these things, they can be shown the love of Jesus and they can actually ask for help that you never even knew they needed. There are people all over our city who need help, and they need to be shown the goodness of God. But if we, it will only happen if we stop walking past. We need to stop, reach out, and start showing them the love of Jesus. And if you're not going to do it yourself, so ma'am, it's not going to be done. So can I encourage you, message that person, go speak to somebody after the service, and just reach out and stop walking past. Thank you.